Transmit audio is critically important for QRP SSB. The same flat characteristics that sound great for 100 watts of local chatting on 80 meters are possibly unsuitable when you're trying to work DX. And with QRP, it's best to design on the basis that every contact will need DX audio from you. I've always had great results with the Noblest Wonder. The signal doesn't always move people's S meter, but it mostly always gets through. In contrast, the Bitex audio isn't as sharp. In this video, I'll discuss a simple change that I found produced better audio in my Bitex. You can see that when I talk, although the peak of my voice energy is around 500 hertz, there's also a second peak above 2 kilohertz. That contributes greatly to intelligibility and is an important part of the spectrum when designing the bandpass characteristics of transmitters. It's also interesting that if you Google microphone audio response, there's often a small peak at around the 2 or 3 kilohertz area. Here, I'm going to compare the receive audio qualities of two transceivers. On the left is the Noblest Wonder. On the right is the BitX. Since both use the same crystal filter on transmit and receive, the transmit quality should be similar as well. Since both use the same crystal filter on transmit and receive, the transmit bandpass should be similar to the receive bandpass. This is the Noblest Wonder. This is the BitEck. If we look at the audio characteristic, you can see that there's a plateau until just before 2 kilohertz, and then the bandpass falls away dramatically. This top end fall off is too severe if you want to convey maximum intelligibility. Now I should point out that unless you're to look at the audio bandpass on a spectrum analyzer, such as frequency on a mobile phone, you might think there is nothing wrong. But if you listen, the audio lacks a bit of sparkle, so important for intelligibility. If you ask me to nominate the ideal audio response for a QRP transmitter, then it would look something like this. A bit of a gradual peak to a high above 2 kHz. And a fall off at the low range. In an SSB transmitter, the carrier will be towards the low end i.e. inserted about here. Of course this is an upper sideband signal, which is not what we want for the bit X. Instead, you want to move the carrier up here, and then the signal you get is lower sideband. Of course then the characteristics of this audio are not optimum. Instead, you'd actually want the filter's bandpass to be more like that so that the highs, in this case this is 3 kilohertz, that's 1 kilohertz, the same, 300 hertz, then the highs become emphasized for lower sideband as well. Another way you can describe it is with a pen representing the carrier oscillator and the carrier that will be suppressed in your balance modulator. The palm of my left hand is lower sideband, 400, 800, 1.5 and 3 kilohertz and my right hand is upper sideband which we won't need for this application. The length of my fingers is roughly the desirable audio pass that you'd want. This is the lower sideband again. The dotted line is approximately the characteristics of the bit X. The solid line is what I consider to be desirable. You'll notice there's a big difference at the top end of the audio range, about 2 or 3 kilohertz. There's two things we can do. 
One is to fiddle with the component values in the ladder crystal filter. So it changes its bandwidth characteristics. It probably needs to be a little bit wider than it actually is. Secondly, we can move the position of the carrier insertion oscillator. Now the amount of change required is very small, maybe only 200 hertz. And if we were to do that, the effect would be to allow more of the highs to get through and fewer of the lows to get through. That might make the audio a little bit sharper and therefore more intelligible at the other end. So we've got two options, either fiddle with the crystal filter, which is quite complicated, or experiment with the setting of the frequency of the carrier oscillator. In the case of the bit X, that's controlled by a crystal and there's a capacitor in series with it. And if you reduce the value of that capacitance, then you increase the frequency of the carrier oscillator. The capacitor we need to change is this one, C102, which is shown as 47 picofarad. We need to reduce its value. The microphone audio input connection, the 12 megahertz carrier oscillator crystal. In my version, there's no trimmer capacitor. There is, however, C102, which I will remove and replace with a smaller value. First test is 68 picofarad. First thing we notice on turn on is the audio from the speaker sounds low. And there's even less highs than before. Now we've got 47 in. The band pass looks a lot the same as we started off with. I thought I'd go really radical and try 22 picofarad. A big excursion from 47, which was the original. Look at this response. Not quite textbook stuff, but definitely optimized for QRP SSB. You can see there is a dramatic reduction in carrier, just with that tiny tweak. One, two, three, four, five. You can hear that the audio is punchy, almost to the point of harshness. Well, another experiment, this time going down to 32 picofarad, 22 in parallel with 10. Unfortunately, it drops off a bit too severely above 2. In the end, I went for 27 picofarads. 22 in parallel with 4.7. I think the bottom end is pretty good, but I still think the bandwidth should be a little bit greater. Maybe an extra 500 hertz above 2 kilohertz. To do that requires work with the crystal filter.